This is an update video on one that I posted a few years ago when I first uh, had a child and wanted to navigate the city's streets of Oxford uh, by bicycle and really doing that from birth. So before a child's about one year old, they're not supposed to be inside of a bike seat. Um, so we looked at getting a, uh, a back feet, which is a, a box bike. And I've got another video up here that shows how it is that you carry both a, a child and a car seat, um, as well as a, a push chair. And this is a small version that's here, at uh, an Oxford cargo bike, just kind of show today. Um, and we've actually changed to a, a new bike, and this is the short version of, of an, somebody else's back feet. But I just wanted to talk about some of the differences between, um, and, and why it is that we shifted away from the back feet um, to, to get our new bike um, in a moment, which is the Turn GSD. Now, first of all, the, the back feet is an excellent bike, and we have absolutely no second thoughts um, about ever getting that to, to begin with from, from birth. Um, through to our kids being about six and four, um, so two children, it's been a fantastic bike. Um, and really some of the best things about it, you kind of appreciate a bit later. Uh, and, and certainly even with our new bike, there's some things that we miss about it. So one of the great things about the bike before that you don't really think about is, is actually just the uh, kickstand. So how does the bike stays stable? And you can see down here, these metal pegs here, which effectively works out to be a bit of a square frame in terms of how it is the bike stays stable. Um, and with that down, it is so stable that our kids, whether they were six or four, um, would always just climb on board from the side and they would step on this little bit here um, and then effectively just lever themselves inside the bike, uh, which is very good because of our pickups or drop-offs. You could always count on them to get into the bike themselves without actually getting off the bike um, on your own. Um, one of the reasons why we were changing was because that little bit that they step on is, is very small. Uh, so if I were to put my foot here, you can see it's only covering about my toes. Um, so even though they're, they're kids with little feet, uh, it would still be an, an issue with them getting in as they got bigger. Um, that being said, they, they still did it and it was fine. The, the biggest reason got rid of it is actually the same as this bike right now, which is that it's not actually electric. Um, so this is a standard cargo bike. Um, and it's got a nice enclosed chain, which is brilliant. We definitely wanted to keep that around because if I was going to work in a suit um, or we were cycling around, you didn't have to worry about one chain maintenance, but two, it catching on your clothes as you were riding. So a really simple way uh, for, for doing drops off and picks up with, with everything else. With the bigger box, which I'll show in a moment, you could throw in pretty much anything. I've put a Brompton bike in the front with my two kids and all of their school stuff and my work bag and, and taking it all out for the day. The dynamo lights are, <laughs> they're just dynamos, so any, any bike that you have as a commuter bike should absolutely have those. Um, but it was a really solid machine. We never had a flat tire in over five years of, of cycling the bike. We put probably over 10,000 miles on the bike because it was a workhorse for us. We used it every single day. Um, the grift ship was, was great for, for going between gears. The, the, other than the kids getting a bit big, with it out being electric, we just happen to live on the top of a hill. Um, and once you start carrying a 50 kilo bike, or sorry, pushing a 50 kilo bike up a hill and your children start to get bigger, you suddenly end up with 70, 80 kilos uh, worth of um, equipment that you're pedaling or pushing up a hill. And that just got to be a bit too much. And when we started looking at um, doing an electric conversion, it kind of worked out to be about the same as if we were to just get a new bike that was more designed. And, and plus we were reading about that to get a conversion later on after you have a bike is, is a bit of a, um, a problem. And, and often it doesn't work as well as it could do. And because the whole purpose of getting electric would be to ease our burdens, so we didn't want to introduce anything else. Um, but we didn't have any problems with it. We had that rain tent to just check out the other video. You can see that. If I go down the hill here, you can see some of the other cargo bikes that are uh, in use within the city. And I'll just go over to uh, one of ours now. So the Babo, that's very similar to, to the Backfeeds one. Here's the red Backfeeds Long John. It's just a slightly older version, um, so it doesn't have the chain guard but for showing that. But we decided to go with the Turin GSD, which you can see looks pretty phenomenally different from our Backfeeds because instead of having the box in the front, um, the children now sit on the back. And they sit on these two seats here, uh, which are very easy to remove. So as they got bigger, you can always just take them up and down. Um, so it's just attached by Velcro. The actual unit that the Velcro attaches to isn't on the frame of the bike, so you don't have to worry about messing up the paint. Um, it just screws on because everything's quite well engineered. So if you pop that down there, I get my two children on here. 
Oops. Um, they can just climb on. We've got our two bags that hold loads of luggage on the side. Um, the bag itself is all right. We just have these little clips here, um, which open up to be quite quite large. Um, we certainly haven't had a problem filling it up. Um, and you get them each for each side, and the kids' legs can go over them, or they collapse entirely up upon themselves, which is good. This one also has integrated lights, but instead of being dynamos, they're actually just plugging in directly to the battery. So it's a Bosch battery, which is down there, mid-gear drive. So instead of being a hub drive, which goes on the front wheel or the wheel wheel, it's just attached to the pedals. And it's really nice because you have a smooth acceleration and it basically feels just like you are riding a normal bike. Um, the battery for it is stored right here. It's a bit funny because the key for it is in between these bits. So you pop that in there, the battery comes out, um, and you have to just pull it up this way. Where when you have the, the cage up here, it becomes, um, you know, it's not... It, it's okay. It's nothing particularly great to, to shout about. Um, but one of the other things that we didn't actually notice or appreciate until after we got this one was this is a bike that's used by multiple people, both my wife and I. Um, and the turn is absolutely fantastic for that because you can adjust two things. One, the seat post. It's got two different adjustments here. Just quick release for bringing the seat up and down. And the second one is going to be the handlebars. Now the handlebars can go, <laughs> yeah, uh, can go forward or back, um, so you can, it's really easy to adjust. You just pop this open, and then the whole handlebar can go to whichever direction you like. So if you'd like to have a flatter ride, you can drop it down, put it up, um, and then once it's in your post, you just pop these things back here. So when you have two people of two different sizes, it's just really simple to get up. Um, and go, and it only takes seconds to, to make it fit for either one of us. Um, the only things that we did to kind of modify that didn't come with this version, if you get the more expensive one, um, it's like an extra thousand pounds and all you're getting for that is a um, continuously variable drive. So instead of having a, um, a, a shifter, uh, like we do, so here's the, it's just a nine speed Shimano, um, you have one where it's, it's basically just a little uh, I don't know how to describe it. Um, it's just, it just has a little revolution and you can increase and decrease it and you can do it from standstill. So it's not something that you need to be pedaling for in order to shift gears, which is good when you're on a hill. Um, the other thing that was a benefit for, for that was um, it comes with a front lock, but we just added one ourselves, an Abus lock here, and we had to get the chain for it. Um, you have to get the biggest one for it because they're very fat tires, um, but after that it's uh, it can be just the, the same. That's one of the other things with the back feats that was quite good was um, because it was such a heavy bike at 50 kilos, nobody would ever actually take away. Whereas with this one, it's quite light. Um, well, light in the sense that it's about 38 kilos. Um, so we would be concerned that people could just pick it up and run with it. Um, so we definitely um, both use that um, to lock it down. Whereas with um, the back feats, we would also have it on the rear wheel and put it on and then forget about it. For this one we'd put it on but we would still have an extra chain lock um, that we would put through the frame here to connect to a, a stationary point because um, otherwise it's a quite an expensive bike to just leave them out. Um, we only use one battery, this is just the Power Pack 400 and that means that we get around, I mean going up and down, we have one big hill on our commute and it's about three to four miles. Um, that I'm doing each day between my house and the rail station um, and back so about eight miles a day. I charge the bike about once a week um, by taking the battery out um, and bringing it to the house. We get probably between 50 and 60 miles um, on that, so it's quite good. You can get a second battery, um, which are down here, which would be doubling uh, the range of the bike. Um, but if I'm only charging it once a week, I don't really care. And we're not doing any touring yet, but when the kids are older maybe we will in which case this will be great for that um, and then we could change this around too because you just take this bit off the back and there's loads of other accessories that you could put on it a uh, bigger seat if you want an adult to go onto it but you can carry 200 kilos worth of weight on the bike so you can do pretty much everything for it um, the hydraulic brakes are brilliant so you get really good stopping um, power and that's actually something that's much better than what we had with the back feeds um, with the back feeds you just didn't get that um, <laughs> Uh, as much. It was still just um, roller brakes, so you didn't, it, it didn't feel as tight as, as this one does. 
But anyway, those are the main differences. 